guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk and today I'm going to film my October random favorites. First and foremost, I apologize so much for this video being quite delayed. As like always, I am going to start off with my book favorites. I have an S at the end because I'm a decisive, you know I can't choose things. It's kind of been the month of indecision in general for me. Um, yeah, I've just I've been going between a lot of books and I can't decide one that I want to stick with. But, but, uh, I did finish reading God Shaped Hole by Tiffany De Bartolo and I loved this book. I love the parallel that it makes with uh, this person in music history. That's all I can say. Because I don't want to spoil because if I say a person's name, then person will then spoil book. This is a great way to start a video off. Anyway, I loved this book. Review for it will be up shortly, probably in the next week. I'm gonna say the next week. I think I might have mentioned this in my last one's favorites. I'm not really sure. But it is Gone Girl by Jillian Finn. Flynn. Flynn? <laughs> Gone Girl by Jillian Flynn. And I saw the movie. I loved the movie to pieces. And I'm reading the book right now. I just kind of stopped reading it because the writing is so good that it's almost depressing and I'm trying to write more this month. It's like when you read something so brilliant, you're like, I can never be that. So I've been picking up and putting that down. And because I've been picking and putting that up, putting that up down, whatever, I started reading Tatiana and Alexander again by Paulina Simons. This is the Bron Bronze Horseman trilogy. I'm loving this. I'm like halfway now. So I'm, I think I'm going to stick with this and it'll be my next read because it's starting to get interesting. Finally. I'm really not loving this book. But it's picked up and I love the characters, so hence why it's in my favorites. I am from Houston, if you guys do not know, and it has currently, well until today really, which is like the 11th, it has been hot and sticky and not like fall. I mean, there's like a couple random fall days, but not really. So I've been really into pretending that it's fall and cold and cozy and stuff, hence wearing this and my lip products. So I have been wearing uh, Touch of Spice by Maybelline. This is the, uh, the matte collection, it's the new one. I'm really liking that. And then I've been really loving Revlon's Black Cherry. I've talked about this a thousand different times. Pretty sure I wore this in one of my Halloween tutorials, my first one, the rocker one. And because fall also, well, no. Any season is always a season for candles and I don't always really listen to seasons to smell a certain candle, to burn it, that's what I meant. Um, but I have listened a little bit more this season and I have been burning the Pumpkin Sugared Donut by Bath & Body Works. I don't like sugary, sweet smelling things and it just, it smells spicy in a doughy way, but not in a donut way to me. Like I don't get donut from this at all, like maybe a cake way, but not the icing kind of cake way, like the battery cake way, but like cooked battery. I'm a bad describer, I'm sorry. I have a complaint about my skin being super bad the past probably like five months. It's just been so horrible. And so I watch Hey Claire, another YouTuber here on the YouTubes because I needed to explain that. And she recommended the Mario Badescu gly Glycolic Acid Toner. And I've not been a really big fan of toner just because I find it overly drying. And this, it's it's kind of drying, but I have other products that I'm about to mention that really like help with the moisture and everything. But this has made quite a big difference in my skin. It's just Google what glycolic acid is instead of me trying to poorly explain it, but it like helps remove the uh, the dead skin cells that will clog up your pores, and which I believe is my big problem with my skin. The smell isn't too crazy. My cats hate it, but I don't mind it. So here are the moisture products that I was talking about. I tried the Eclos Daily Facial Cleansing Oil. Uh, Megan, my friend, you guys know Megan, uh, talked to me about this. I think she heard it from a YouTuber as well. I don't remember who. But uh, this is ew, Apple Stem Cell Skin Care. It's a oil that you scrub your face and whatnot and then you wash it off and then do you like your regular cleanser and whatnot. It just helps remove the makeup. You can use it in the morning and at night. And I know people shy away when they hear oil because they're like, oh oil, I'm already oily. But oil, when you have it on your skin, it kind of keeps your skin from wanting to make more if that makes any sense. That's why moisturizing is important, which I used to not believe in. And I don't even have oily skin. I have dry skin. So I don't know why I had that issue. But this has really helped with keeping my skin moisturized. I was having some serious dry skin problems. So this has definitely helped. And it's, oh my god, it makes taking my eye makeup off so much easier. Oh, it saved my eyes. Because my eyes used to get all puffy and like, like kind of crackly around the edges because I would like have to scrub at it so much. Uh, so this has really saved me there. 
and because my eyes are doing that crackly thing, I also picked up the Mario Badescu, that's a word I don't know how to say. I was just going to keep it as I don't know how, but mm, hydroionic eye cream. <laughs> this kind of has uh, one of those, oh, it's the word that I can never remember. Oh, it looks like I did crack. I'll put the word up. It smells kind of like medicine. Just put it under your eyes. I put it all up in this business and anywhere that I'm feeling very dry. I feel like I've been talking through this video super fast, but I'm very low on battery and I am determined to get this filmed. Now I'm going to go on and talk about some of my non-tangible object favorites. And I still don't have an editing system. I know I am the biggest procrastinator ever and I don't want to drop the money for it, honestly. I'll, f I'll figure something out. Um, so I can't edit in like the whatever. I'm gonna go through these kind of quick though just because I have a lot of movie and TV favorites. First off, I would like to say that I am rewatching Gilmore Girls. Loving that. I'm like almost onto the third season now. Really awesome. Second season is my favorite season. My favorite movie of the month um, is a tie between The East and Gone Girl. Everyone knows what Gone Girl is, so I'm not going to really explain that. It was a kick-ass movie. I really, really loved it. I think I saw it this month, unless it was last month, and I mentioned it in last month's favorite. In that case, kind of edit this out. I like how I talk about my future self in third person anyway. The East is, it's a hard one to describe. It's very different and it's almost kind of about a cult, but uh, partially bad and this partially good kind of thing. It's about nature and the waste that we produce and really corrupt businesses that will uh, continue to produce the, like these medicines that hurt the consumer but they don't give a shit and cancer causing things in the water that the businesses are knowingly putting in there it's kind of Aaron Brockovich-esque in that way except we're going to you know take revenge and show the world this it was like this um anarchy kind of cult group-esque type of thing where they're very one with nature it's weird it's trippy and it made me want to watch it more than once but then not ever again at the same time Speaking of things that I never want to watch again, but I really loved at the same time, um, I watched Old Boy. That's recently added on the U.S. Netflix, and that movie's fucked up. Megan, you were right. She, you, you, I loved it, but I hated it at the same time. It was about this guy who was really just a shit. He was a shit. And then he gets locked away in a room for, I think it was like 20 years, and he would like try to escape and you wouldn't be able to. So he's literally trapped there for 20 years and then he gets out and he's trying to like seek revenge and figure out who it was that held him captive. And oh, it's really, really dark. I would not go into that thinking it is going to be a fun movie. That is the furthest thing from a fun movie that you could ever get. Now I'm going to talk about my one last TV show that is currently on air that I'm really, really loving and it is Stalker. It, it sounds like what it is. It's like about stalkers and it's kind of that... Um, in CIS type of law and order style thing where it's each individual thing per episode but then it also has like a couple of the main characters personal lives woven in throughout it that type of thing and at the end this is my one thing that I especially love about the show is they have um like those stalker kind of songs but they have it like someone's covering it at the end of it and it's usually like um oh what's that one by the police I'll be watching you and they have it like in this very um, smooth and like ambient-sodic, that was not a word, ambience-like voice, and anyway, it just, it's super ironic, and I just, I love it. I love that they do that at the end of every, every episode. It makes the episode for me. And one honorable mention, this poor little show got canceled, and I really liked it, and it was like my one comedy. It was Manhattan Love Story. Tear. I liked it. It was a comedy, and it was cute. I guess it just didn't get enough ratings, or didn't get enough viewings. And now my music, my very last thing. I have solely been listening to Jeff Buckley's album, Grace. That's pretty much my entire month. A little bit of rock and roll. I was listening to the Eagles a lot. And I think it was the Rolling Stones in the beginning of the month. Something like that. But yeah, I've basically just been listening to Jeff Buckley. Pretty much. That has been my month. And then of course the Airborne Toxic event because I cannot get through a week without listening to them. Oh, and I guess a specific song, um, I mean, Hallelujah, that has been, oh, it's the most beautiful song I've ever heard, probably. I haven't listened to it in ages, and then just, oh, thank you, Tiffany DeBartolo, for, like, reminding me of old music that I forget about sometimes. She has amazing taste. She's an author, by the way, wrote God Shaped Hole and uh, had a killer rock star. Anyway. 
really been loving that album, but oh, also a random thing that I intended to start this ramble off with. I have been really, really loving uh, Jeff's cover of Van Morrison's Sweet Thing. Oh, I love Sweet Thing. I like Van Morrison's version. I think I might actually like Jeff, like, 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 and I also really like Jeff's cover of it. It's just, ugh. And it's like a really, really long song. It's like, uh, I want to call it American Pie. Is that an American Pie? I took my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. That song, uh, like seven minutes long, long, quite long. So I just listened to that like twice for shower time. So that's what I've been listening to a bit of. I think that is all in my way of favorites. A, hope you guys, in a, a, hope you guys, I'm Canadian. Hi, Mackenzie. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys later next fun bookworms talk. I have a quick explanation in my poetry favorites why it is difficult for me to be filming and it's like more of a rambly explanation, but eh information's over there and this video is already kind of long and that one's a little bit shorter so go over there and watch that if you are curious but um, I'm gonna end up just stock filming videos from now on but I think that is about oh no it's not I lied I totally lied Corey wanted me to open this on camera I think it's something to my old myspace I'm pretty sure it is let's let's see oh my god I, I think it is I think it is oh no oh this is so weird uh Oh, I need to delete that. How do I need to delete this? <laughs> but I think that is about it, and I will see you guys later next time of Gorms Talk. Bye.